Hey guys, this is Alan from Queen Crew Tropical Singer. Today's episode, I'm planting a Cecropia, which is one of the rarest plants that we have here at our nursery. This plant right here, I don't know if it's in the camera or not. My wife grew from cutting, I think about two, two and a half years ago. And uh, we didn't think it was gonna make it, and it did. Now this plant right here, we have been babying for the, for the whole time. And uh, we actually got blooms coming up, if you can see right there. If you're not familiar with Cecropia, which most people are not going to be, this plant right here, um, I'll post a picture of the fruit on the screen. When it flowers, the flowers come up, and then as the fruit ripens, they're gonna drop down, and then that's when you know when you, uh, when you can pick the fruits and actually eat it. You eat the skin of the fruit, you can just peel off the fingers and eat it, it's extremely sweet. Now, this is a tropical plant, guys. I live in the desert, so I'm planting it in the ground so we can learn from it and see how much uh, sun it can take, and then how much better it's actually going to do in the ground. Most plants will do way better in the ground than in the container. Now, as you can see, this plant actually, this is about six feet tall, five to six feet tall. And that's in two and a half years from a cutting that was about the size from here, probably to here. I think that's really good. Um, I think that's actually fast growth in my book. Now, the inside of the plant is actually hollow. It's weird. And then the guy that gave us the cutting, he told us that, yeah, there's no way you're gonna be able to propagate it from cutting. And then we did. It's just like rooting any other cutting, guys. Um, a semi hardwood cutting. Nothing special. And it grew, and uh, we kept it in the greenhouse. Um, I know this plant is not um, heat sensitive because here in the summer it gets really hot 110, 120 degrees. And then last summer this guy was actually in the greenhouse, and in the greenhouse it can get easily 1 to 120, 130 degrees. Now the humidity level in the greenhouse obviously a little higher than the outside, so that allows the plant to take more heat. Now out here in the open, I'm not gonna be able to build a greenhouse around it. Um, so we're just gonna see how it does um, in the ground, and then that, you know I'll keep uh, I'll make videos over time and let you guys know the progress. So planting the tree in the ground, it's just like any other tree. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil it a little bit, and then I'm gonna use a little bit of warm poop in there. And then I'm gonna make the hole a little bigger than usual, even though the soil right here drains within eight hours or so. So my drainage in this area is good. Uh, but just to give the plant a head start, I'm just gonna put some organic material in there. Um, are the worm castings gonna make my plant grow faster? No, they're not. Uh, the only reason I'm doing it, guys, remember, I'm kickstarting the process, the organic process, so that way it brings in all the bugs in the area and they start eating it up and they start pooping and that way I know my plant is not going to be deficient on any nutrients in the next few months. Now let's go ahead and check the hole guys. Three questions um, that you need to ask when planting anything in the ground. The first one is where do you want or where does the plant need to be? Now this plant thing is um, natural habitat. We'll take full sun but then in, in their natural habitat it's also 100% humidity. So here, you know, full sun is like no clouds in the sky and 120 degree ambient temperature during the summer. So I'm just picking an area on the eastern side of my house where it's actually gonna get some natural shade and wind block. So if I show you, that's my house right there. There's this big Palo Verde tree up here. And this tree is gonna give the plant Stone shade, especially overhead when the sun is at its hottest. And then as the sun goes down towards uh, in the afternoon, my house is gonna shade it. And then I got those ice cream bananas in there as well. That as they get older, they're gonna get huge and they're gonna shade the general area. Now I know this, um, this spot right here gets plenty of sunlight in the morning. Um, so I'm not gonna have any issues with the plant being the fishing on sunlight. Uh, how much sun can you take? I'm not sure. I know it takes full sun in South Florida, but here guys, I'm not sure, especially with the lack of humidity. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna plant it in the ground, and then just to be a little safe, I'm gonna build a little uh, shade structure around it with probably about 30 or 40 percent shake cloth just to help a plant along. Once the plant's fully rooted in the ground, we will know the true capability of this plant. So we won't really know until by next year how much this plant can handle. 
Um, so location, guys, you want to give it some uh, shade, I would say, after 90 degrees. I have not tested this plant at higher temperatures in full sun, so that's the only reason why I'm recommending shading after 90 degrees. I'll keep you updated in the future and I'll let you know, you know, how much more sun it can take. And the plant will tell me just by sunburning. But if it sunburns right now, that's not going to tell me anything because the plant's not rooted in the ground. So it's just not accurate reading. The second question is going to be how big of a hole do you need? That always depends on your drainage, guys. My drainage right here is within 24 hours, so I'm good to go. I just need to make a hole bigger than the root ball. But to spoil this plant a little bit, which I don't do very often, I'm just going to make the hole a little wider and a little deeper because I'm going to be putting some warm poop in there to kickstart the process of, uh, uh, you know, the living organisms in the soil. Um, so I'm going to make it a little bigger. So, And the best way to check that is to dry fit the plant. I'll show you that in a minute. Now the third question guys is, do you need uh, another plant to make fruit? And for this plant, yes you do. You need male and female guys. Now I have no clue what I got here. It's flowering, but you know, male uh, plants also flower. So I don't know what I got. Um, and you know, I'm not expecting fruit anyway, um, because my conditions here are not ideal for fruiting. I may be able to grow a lot of the plants that a lot of people think can grow here. But getting fruit, guys, that's a different story. It's too hot here, too windy, too dry, and that will cause a lot of the fruits and the flowers to wilt and drop. Um, so it's fruiting, guys. If I get fruit, I'll be extremely surprised. But if I don't, that's expected. I know I will get flowers. I know the flowers may get pollinated if I'm able to get a, a male and a female. Um, but actual fruit holding on the plant until full ripeness, that's probably never gonna happen. And that's just because I'm in the desert, guys. Uh, my temperatures are extreme day and night, and then they're always changing from day to day. So the only reason I'm planting this in the ground is because, well, I can, and then uh, my wife wanted me to put it in the ground. Um, and then what else are we gonna do? You know, grow in the container forever? Then the plant will never be as strong as it can be unless we put it in the ground anyways guys yes you need male and female i only got i don't know what i got right now but i'll let you know once it flowers um so let me get started when we first started um the, i used to plant trees just like this but i used to make my holes like massive holes guys and then uh, since it was such a big hole we also have to use all kinds of soil amendments, right? So that was many years ago. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. We used to spend probably about six to seven dollars in soil amendments per hole because we bought everything that you could buy. Because we thought that if you put all kinds of stuff in the soil, it will make your plants grow faster. And now those trees that I put in the ground don't look any bigger than the ones that all I did was just make sure that they had enough water, some organic material in the soil, and they were good to go. All right, guys, that seems to be about right. So let me go ahead and put the pot back in the uh, in the hole, and then see how it looks. That looks just perfect. I have about six inches clearance on the bottom, and I would say about three inches all the way around the uh, the container. Um, I don't need to go bigger that that is that is plenty um, now let's go ahead and uh, get this tree planted in the ground now the first thing you're gonna do is if you're using soil amendments which you can use any organic material like compost or warm poop bat poop whatever poop you want to use I don't recommend to use manure guys because manure in my experience it's never fully decomposed and then you may feel dry to the touch but as soon as you wet it, it will kickstart the uh, decomposition process and then it's going to heat up. And then on top of that, it's most times it's not fully dried either. So it has a lot of ammonia in there from the cow's urine. And then as soon as you mix that with water, the ammonia is going to dilute in the water and get into the root system of your plant. And guess what's going to happen if the concentration is too high? It's going to burn your tree. Manure, that's why I don't like to use it in, this, in the hole. Unless you know 100% that it's being fully decomposed. 
if you want to use manure guys I always recommend to buy it take it out of the, the banks make a pile somewhere in the Sun hose it down put a tarp over it and then every week go turn it you get the shovel and then you turn it and every week you're gonna do that and do not use it for about two to three months um, so if you're gonna use manure because it's cheap go ahead and make sure you let it decompose farther and make sure you keep it moist and then do not let it fully dry out you want it you want all that ammonia to completely evaporate um, but yeah so let me go ahead and get the worm castings right now so the smaller the particles the easier it's going to be for those particles to dissolve in water and then whatever dissolves in water your plant will eat this is no medical dirt guys by you putting this in the ground um, your plants not eating this directly okay so do not think that because you put in this in the hole that your plants eating it directly you are indirectly feeding your plant you're feeding the bugs in the soil this is going to attract all the worms or the roly polies everything in the soil that's alive is going to come in here and they're going to eat that up and as long as there is um, moisture in the soil they're going to stay there and then they're going to poop now their poop is way more beneficial than this poop right here because it's going to be way smaller and then small enough when mixed with water then the root system of your plant is going to be able to absorb the nutrients now how much of a compost or worm poop you want to put in the, in the bottom usually you want to put about maybe two inch layer guys nothing too big nothing too small two inches um maybe two inches about that yeah there you go so let me go ahead and do that right now all right so we got the hole right there so you just want to spread it around break up the chunks guys just like that and then you want to compact it down a little bit And then the next layer is going to be your native soil. Now let me see uh, uh, how much I'm going to have to put in there just by uh, putting the container in the hole. And then uh, seeing how level I am to, to the soil around it. You want the surface of the top of your uh, root ball to be level with the soil or is slightly higher you never want it to be lower because that stuff in the bottom is going to break down over time and that's going to make everything on the top collapse down and then you know if it's a, such a drastic uh, drop uh, in areas where it rains a lot a lot of the water is going to pull in this area and then if you get a lot of rain and the water is sitting right next to the trunk that's not a good thing so i got about i would say two to three inches to go so i'm going to backfill it with some native soil compact it down and we are good to go now the next thing we're gonna do guys is we're gonna take the plant out of the container now there are several ways you can do that and normally on a regular plant um, you know I usually pull it out of the container you can either slide it out you can lean it sideways like this and then you can pound the container around and then slightly pull the root ball out. That will work on plants that are fully rooted in the ground, I mean in the container. Um, this plant right here, it has bigger roots in there. Uh, but for most part, I, the roots are very tiny. So I think these are the anchoring roots. But the actual root system of the plant, it looks to be very tiny. So I don't want to go ahead and pull it. So the other way to get your plant out of the container is just by cutting the container. So the easiest way to do that, guys, is you get your knife and then you just make vertical cuts um, like this. I like to do this, especially on plants that I have never, um, you know, I don't have much experience with. Um, but yeah, if you can see, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, let me, uh, let me bring it closer. You can see it's uh, fully rooted in there, all the way around, and the roots are very tiny. So what this tells me is that this plant probably has a harder time drinking the water from the soil, so you have to keep the soil wetter to make up for that in my area. 
uh, in the natural habitat it rains every 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 single day so uh, these plants never lack water um, but that's probably why the reason uh, why their roots are tiny because I didn't want to drink every bit of water from the soil um, but yeah so I could have pulled pull this plant out of the container just fine but I just wanted to be safe and this container right here is all torn up anyway so it needed to go in the trash and then gently I'm gonna pull it out just like that and since the plant is not straight I'm gonna make it straight by planting the root bowl like this or not never mind no I'm gonna put it flat like that because the plant up here is straight but the trunk is just crooked like this which way do you want the canopy facing well usually you want the bushier side facing the can uh, uh, the area where you uh, the side where you get the most sun uh, but this one as you can see uh, it didn't really have much of a canopy because well it's small um, and then I have, I'm gonna build a shade structure around it anyway and then it has the shade from the tree above and then it has the shade from my house so to be honest for this one it doesn't really matter um, now let's finish planting this in the ground so you want to do this in layers uh, you want to put a, a you know a few inches of uh, compost or organic material around and then um, and then you want to backfill it uh, look uh, I got really polished right there uh, that's a good sign that the soil is good or getting there at least just work your fingers in there anyways Pack it down all the way around and then doing layers. One layer is going to be your organic material, and then the next layer is going to be your um, native soil. If you don't have good native soil, let's say your native soil is full of rocks and then uh, nasty or whatever, then just get some clean uh, topsoil. Then your last layer is going to be your native soil. One thing to keep in mind guys is you don't, wanna, you don't want to bury the crown of your plant. So you want to get the soil around it, but you don't want actual soil on top because this soil right here compacts very easily, uh, especially since I have a lot of clay, it prevents drainage. And then if you put a thick layer on the top, it's going to stay wet indefinitely unless if the water evaporates and then it will prevent the water from actually getting into the root ball of your plant. The water will hit that layer on the top and then it's just going to sheet off the side going away from the root ball and then when your plant dries out and, and dies on you you'll be wondering what happened you know I've been watering my plant but in reality you put too much soil on top of the root ball and the root ball never actually got the water um, it looked wet but down below the water did not penetrate so I finished up planting I um the excess soil I just made a, a berm around the plant now most people built this for um, deep watering I'm not worried about deep watering right now because this plant's not rooted in the ground so even if I deep water it I still going to have to water in a, in a day or two because that root ball will still dry out almost at the same rate it did the day prior it was planted in the ground I'm guesstimating this plant will take easily at least six months to root itself in the ground. Until then, it will not benefit from the water in the soil around the root ball. That's the main mistake people make when planting in the ground. They flood everything in there 10 feet deep and then they forget about the plant for a week. And then because the soil around the root ball is wet, they assume the plant's good to go. That root ball will dry out faster than the surrounding soil regardless of how wet the soil around it is because it has no roots there guys and it will not have roots in there for a few months but anyways so the way i'm gonna water this plant is just the way i was watering it in the container probably daily um what i always like to uh, recommend people to do is once you put your tree in the ground um every six 
12 hours, come over here and stick your finger in there and stick it all the way down there. And then the minute you no longer feel moisture on the tip of your finger, that is exactly how often you're going to water this plant. Plants sweat for the same reasons you do, so the hotter the temperatures around the plant, the faster it will actually dry out. So that is why it's very important after you plant your tree in the ground to check every six to 12 hours because it can dry in a matter of hours and if you don't catch it, especially if, if you live in the desert like I do, your plant will die in just one hour of going dry, especially in the heat uh, or in the sun. Um, but that's how you're gonna water this plant. For at least the first season, and that's how I'm going to water it. Um, as it gets older, based on the root system that we saw, uh, they seem to be a small uh, and fibrous. So I assume I'm gonna have to water shallow uh, even when it gets older. Now, also, since this plant has never seen full sun without any kind of protection, because we had it in the container for his whole life, I think about two years here now. Um, I built a, a temporary shade structure. Uh, I did not show it on video, guys. Sorry, my camera died from the heat and then there was no way to record it. And I needed to put up the shade because, well, all it takes is a few hours in the sun to get destroyed, um, especially if the plant is not used to the sun. Now, all I did, I got four stakes. I put four in the ground, I spaced them out evenly, and then I left some room in there because I'm gonna be using this structure in the winter time to build a temporary greenhouse so I can cold protect this plant. I know this plant is cold sensitive, so I need to change the ambient temperature around the plant to protect it in the winter time. Um, I know it can take lower to 30 degrees, no problem, as long as I protect it from the frost and the cold wind. But lower temperatures than that, um, I think it will die, guys. Uh, every year, I mean, I didn't even leave it in the greenhouse because it's, it's so special to us. So we brought it in the house and that's where it's been for the past two winters in the house. Um, outside, it handled 30s, um, you know, briefly, no problem, without any damage. But I know any lower temperatures, it may die. So I'm not gonna risk it. Now, at one point, if this plant grows bigger than the structure, guys, obviously I'm not gonna be able to protect it. So if you watch my how to protect cold sensitive plants, I'm not gonna build a structure for this guy once it gets older. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a propane tank. I'm gonna place it away from the plant somewhere over here, blowing heat against it. So that way it keeps it warm. And then um, that's the only way I'm gonna be able to protect it during the winter time if it gets too big for me to protect it. Uh, is it worth it? For me it is, not for everybody guys. So that's why I try to explain everything in details when you come to our nursery because um, we don't want our plants to suffer and we don't want you to have any false expectations. But anyways guys, yeah, uh, shade structure, this is for the summer. This right here is 50% shade cloth. Uh, I can probably go 30, you can probably go 60, 70. As long as it gets uh, some sunlight, it'll be okay. Full darkness, probably not okay because this plant needs sun to grow. And then uh, I just I just put uh, the, the shade cloth right on top of it. You can see right there, I'm gonna clamp it down right here so the wind doesn't blow it away. And, uh, and this is how um, you plant and care for a cecropia tree. Like I said guys, this is the first time planting one in the ground, so we will learn together. Um, I will make update videos over time, and then uh, we will find out exactly how much sign can take, how fast it grows, and then uh, yeah, we'll grow, go from there. For right now, I'm gonna baby it some shade until the plant gets rooted in the ground. Once it gets rooted in the ground, which is not, I'm not expecting, that to happen until you know later this year or even next year uh, then I will remove the shade cloth and then we will see how much sun I can actually tolerate I know it takes full sun in Florida but in Florida they have humidity to make up for the sun uh, here we do not so we'll find out uh, anyways guys if you like the video make sure you uh, subscribe like the video and then if you have any uh, questions just comment below I will see you next time